الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما تعلمنا وزدنا بفضلك علما وتعليما إنك على كل شيء قدير so 53 says حدثنا إسماعيل بن إسماعيل بن أبي ويس قال حدثني أخي عن سليمان بن بلال عن محمد بن أبي عتيق عن ابن شهاب عن أبي سلمة ابن عبد الرحمن أن أبا الرداد الليثي أخبره عن عبد الرحمن بن عوف So this is Abd al-Rahman, uh, so Abu Salaman writing from somebody from his father, right? So perhaps his father was much older, Allahu uh, Alam. أنه سمع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول قال الله عز وجل أنا الرحمن وأنا خلقت الرحم واشتققت لها من اسمي فمن وصلها, فمن وصلها وصلته ومن قطعها بتته <coughs> So he says, uh, with this chain transmission, that uh, Allah the Almighty said, I am the Rahman. And I have created, in italics, I have created family ties. I have created the womb. And I have created family ties. And and I have derived its name from my name. Right? Rahim, from the word Rahma. Mercy, from Rahman. If anybody, so what is Allah, the language and the tone Allah is using is a, a tone of augustness. Do not mess with me. Do not mess with me. I am the one who did this and I did this and I did this. Do not mess with me. When you're messing with family ties, you're messing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. Right? If anybody, if anyone maintains ties of kinship, I, am, I, connect, I, I maintain connected with him. I will keep, keep ties with him. And I should cut off anybody who cuts them off. May Allah forgive us all. So we've spoken about this many, many times, but anyways, it's almost, you know, uh, Gaza and all these things. Gaza is a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a picture just of our own selves, right? It's, it's the same thing. There's haram happening in our own lives we don't want to change. There's people being oppressed in our own lives we don't want to change. If, the, if, if our families were connected, then the ummah would be connected because we are the ummah. Right, it's like a teenager. I don't know if there's any teenagers here complaining about life. I hate my town. I hate my school. I hate this. I hate that. You are the school. You are your town. You are America. Right? Oh, America is this. You are America. Don't complain about America. Excuse me. You are America. You are the Ummah. And so the situation we have now is the Ummah is divided because we are divided. We came together, and the Ummah will be together. Simple as that. <clears throat> we shouldn't look at this country or that country or blame this ruler or that ruler. Look at ourselves. May Allah forgive us. <coughs> and 54. <coughs> so that previous hadith is narrated by Imam Ahmad in the Musnad. It's narrated by Al-Hakim in the Mustadrak and other places. So the hadith is not on the level at all of, of Sahih Bukhari. Is it even Sahih? I don't know. Right. But again, indicative of the level that Imam Bukhari wants in Sahih Bukhari, as opposed to in this book, when he's talking about adab, it's a different level, totally. To remind ourselves, somebody says, but the hadith is weak, why did you quote it? So, Habibi, you have no idea about anything to the hadith, just don't talk. Right. If you don't know what you say, the hadith is in this book, that's enough. That's the one that you need to, to know. Okay. 55, uh, 50, 54, sorry. Hadathana Musab Ismail من يصلها يصله ومن يقطعها يقطع يقطعه لها لسان طلق ذلق يوم القيامة. Right. So it says that uh, Abdullah uh, Abdul Ambasi said I visited Abdullah bin Amr at Al Wahd, one of his some property that he had in Taif in Medina Mecca, and he said Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم pointed his finger out to us and said kinship is derived from the Rahman when someone remains. Maintains connections and ties of kinship, they remain connected with Him, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And if they cut them off, then 
then they cut Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala off. And uh, they will they will all be unfettered. They will be talq, lisan and talq. They will speak eloquently and dhalq on judgment day. And this is reality every single thing. Your phone is going to speak on judgment day. Your laptop is going to speak on judgment day. Your lips and tongue that you used to say, that you used to speak with will speak. Right? All of these things will speak. And so, you know, you should be very, very careful. May Allah protect us. Um, 55 حدثنا إسماعيل قال حدثني سليمان عن معاوية بن أبي مزرد عن يزيد بن رومان عن عروة بن زبير عن عائشة رضي الله عنها أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الرحيم سجنة شجنة من الله من وصلها وصله ومن قطعها قطعه الله and he says uh, kinship is derived from Allah himself and anyone who maintains ties of kinship, Allah maintains ties with. If anyone cuts them off, Allah cuts him off. And this hadith <coughs> is in Bukhari. So the previous hadith is the same hadith, but from a different Sahabi. Right? So is it does it, can it happen that Prophet says something once or twice or three times and different people narrate it? Of course. Right? And obviously when somebody narrates it, then it, it strengthens the trust we have in the in that hadith. Right. But just technically speaking, whenever a hadith is narrated by another Sahabi, we give it a different name. Okay, we give it a different name. Okay, so Anas ibn Malik replies, so next one, he says 56. It says, Babu Silatul Rahim Tazidu fil Umar. Maintaining family ties benefits you in the dunya. So is that so is that then ikhlas? Like I keep good ties with somebody and the only reason I'm being nice to my mom or nice to my brother is because I want to live for a long time. Is that ikhlas? That's called ikhlas. So you are doing trade with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that trade is based on iman. Like, it's not just dunya. It's not, you're not believing in the dunya. Believing that Allah changes my dunya. Just like when you give charity in order to pass your test. We give charity in order to get cured or to cure someone in your family. You're doing it for the dunya. But it's not just dunya. You are expressing your iman in Allah. Right? And your fear of Allah and your trust in Allah. So it is something that Allah loves. It is ikhlas. Is it the same as doing it only for the akhirah? No. Is it the same as doing it only for Allah? No. But it is ikhlas. You're not showing off. Right? Like, I really want to drive a nice car. How can I do that? Make dua for a nice car. So that's called iman, right? Making dua is part of your iman and believing that Allah is the one who's going to give it to you. That's iman. It's a good thing to do. Allah loves it when you ask. So there's nothing wrong with that, right? Obviously, it's better to do it for the akhirah or for Allah Himself. But there's nothing wrong with you know, uh, you know, and that's something that we we see, right? You want to make money, go on Umrah. You want to make money, go on Hajj. You want more risk, have more children. Right? That's how it works out. The more you give, the more you get. That's how it works out. Right, so there's so there's nothing wrong in that. That's iman. That's a it's a good and beautiful thing. <clears throat> um, so uh, so it says, "Hadathan Abdullah ibn Abdullah ibn Salih." Al hadathni al Layth. This is Layth ibn Saad. Right. So you have to understand that Imam Bukhari is narrating from the students. Of Imam Malik and the people of that tabaqa of that generation. So Laith ibn Sa'd is in Egypt. He is kind of the Imam Malik of Egypt. Laith, Malik is in Medina. And so so he's he's so Imam uh, uh Imam Bukhari is studying with the students of Laith ibn Sa'd. So that's Hadathni al Laith. Hadathni Uqail. Right? And these are the these are the close circle. Uqail is of the close circle of Ibn Shihab al Zuhri. Ibn Shihab al Zuhri, one of the key narrators of the seerah, right? A lot of the seerah comes directly from him. He's born in the year 50, approximately. So on the year that Aisha passes away, he's born. So we get a kind of picture of where is Bukhari here. Bukhari, his teacher, is studying with Laith ibn Sa'ad. Laith ibn Sa'ad is studying with the students of a zuhri who was born in the year 50, approximately. And that's the year that Aisha is passing away. Okay. And late and and Ibn Shihab al-Zuhri because he was you know born in that year, 
he still was able to study with some of the Sahaba like Anas, because Anas died in like 90 or 91, right? So if you have a kind of a picture here, let me just show you this. It's just important to have this idea of picture when you see the hadiths. Um, give me a second. Let me close this, close window. So as a timeline, right? Here's a timeline. So we have Bukhari here. Bukhari passing, I think he passed away in 271, I believe, something like that. Allahu Okay. I believe I believe that somebody can double check. Mustafa can just double check. I think Bukhari passed away in 271. Hijri, of course, right? So then you've got his teacher. I don't know when he's passing away, but then you have like a two generations before him. Okay, anyway. So now we have Malik and those kind of people. So Imam Malik, again, Latham and Sa'ad, approximately the same kind of time. They're, they're the same same time. So Imam Malik passes away in one, in 179. Okay, so it's like 80 years gap there. Okay, so Imam Bukhari will be narrating, from, for example, he, he will study with the students of Imam Malik. Here he's studying with a student of somebody of that same generation. So I don't know when Latham and Sa'ad, but a similar kind of time. Okay. Okay, Mustafa, but when's, uh, I don't want AD, I want, I want Hijri. Anno Domini, Astaghfirullah. You know what Anno, Anno Domini means, uh, Mustafa? No. Yeah, it means in the year of our Lord. So 870 means in the year of our Lord. Who do, who do they mean by in the year of our Lord? In G Jesus, right? So 870 years since the since the death of Jesus. Right. Um, so um, to, usually today in old books, they'll use A.D., but you, we use the word C.E. OK, C.E. Uh, and so we have uh, B.C.E. Before Common Era and C.E. Common Era. OK, 257. There we go. So 271 is who then? I don't know. I know. Right. So 256. OK, 256. My mistake there. OK, so so anyway, we have the, we have generation here, this generation. OK. And we have like people like Imam Ahmad, Imam Ahmad, Imam Ahmad didn't study with Imam Malik, but those kind of people there. And then you've got here the generation before them, a Zuhri. So Ibn Shihab, a Zuhri. So again, this is a key narrator of writer of the Sirah, in terms of like, okay, who's writing the history of the Prophet, Zuhri and other people. So Zuhri, I believe he passes away like 125, something like that. I know he's born in 50 or 51. And I think he he passes away in something like 100, 125 or something like that, approximately. Okay? So you can see that generation gap. Okay? Now, then we have Anas. Anas represents like the end of the Sahaba. Right? Sayyidina Anas, radiallahu anhu, who passed away in 90 or 91, something like that. Okay? And so he, he lives for a long time. Most of the Sahaba are dying way before that. Right? Like Aisha, radiallahu anha, she's passing away. She's narrating lots of hadiths. She's passing away in 50. Okay, now where's Abu Hanifa in this timeline? Abu Hanifa's here. Imam Hanifa is born here in eighty. Right, eighty to hundred and fifty. Okay, so that's like the timeline. Uh, Imam Imam Malik is born. I don't know. I'm trying to think now. Probably something in the year 100, 100 and something. Okay, so that's the kind of timeline. So we have Imam Bukhari, he's studying with these kind of people, but everybody is basically traveling the world to find Imam Malik or his students, right? Zuhri, right? That's a, that's a key author of the seerah. Now, obviously, there's a problem because he's not alive during the time of the Prophet, so I don't know, right? 
So if he has a complete chain of transmission, it's going to be sahih. If he doesn't, it's not going to be sahih, right? And then we have Anas. So here, this hadith goes, Anas as an eyewitness, Zuhri as an eyewitness, quoting from that. From him, it goes to the not just any the, not just anybody, but his key circle, right? So when you look at Sahih Bukhari, he's not just interested in a reliable narrator. He's interested in a people, a reliable narrator of the key circle of that person. So Zuhri has lots of students, but he has people who are the key circle, right? And so and so so here, Uqail is of that key circle, and of these great narrators of Uqail are Alayth ibn Sa'd. And then here is Abdullah ibn Saleh. So what you'll generally find is like people like Imam Malik and these kind of people, these are, they, they, they used to say, alayhim madar al-hadith, right? Lots of hadith go through them. Whereas Bukhari, it's ex extremely rare for Imam Bukhari to have a hadith that nobody else has. Like that doesn't happen. Because by this time, hadith has spread everywhere. Like about, about this time, right? So it's possible that hadith, Imam Malik has a hadith that no one else has. But like the next generation, like Imam Shafi does not narrate hadith from Imam Malik that no one else narrates. That doesn't really happen. Right? Yeah. Now things have become widespread. Right? So that's basically a timeline there. Right? And every single hadith we can kind of do that with. Right? But this hadith, he says, uh, that my editor says, hadith in sahih on akhrajahu al-musannif fi buyu in this chapter of, of sales. I'm not sure why. Oh yeah, I see, in the chapter of sales, right? But this is going to be like a super Sahih Hadith because it's Bukhari narrating from one of his teachers from a from a key student of Zuhri, uh, so from, from Layth ibn Sa'ad, who's amazing, from a key student of Zuhri, not just anybody of Zuhri, from Anas, right? Does this diagram make sense? Right, and this is a general thing, right? So just just a side point here, the Hanafis in general, they will stipulate they will they will treat hadith that are widespread at this time, right? How do I do this? If I just put a little general thing, right? They'll say hadith should be widespread at this time, okay? Hadith should be widespread. Okay. Whereas for the Muhaddithin, they don't stipulate that. They stipulate it to be a ship should be down here by this stage. So for the Hanafis, if the Hadith is not widespread at this kind of period in time, like it's not well known among the Sahab and Tabi'een. They're going to treat it in a particular way. They're going to say, yeah, it's, it's not like wrong, but I don't, we're not going to put it on the level in order to like fundamentally change the Sharia because it's not really that well known at all. Right? Whereas for the Muhaddithin, they're going to put it here. I apologize, it looks really kind of funny. For the Muhaddithin, it's very different. For the Muhaddithin in general, they say, if it's not widespread by this time, that is a problem. Right? So you'll find somebody, for example, Bukhari says, we'll say something like this. Here's this hadith narrator that I studied with in Balkh, in Afghanistan, and he's the only person who told me this hadith. That's fishy. Because by this time, for about the, by, by about the year 200, all hadiths are widespread. Right? Hadiths are not. Right? So if you look, for example, you know, here's a hadith, for example, Imam Malik. Imam Malik students are in Spain or in Central Asia. So like, you know, how is it possible that the hadith of Imam Malik is not known? It's not possible. So the hadith is spreading all over the place by that time. So for the muhaddithin, if you don't, if that hadith is only known to Imam Bukhari, that's basically impossible. That just means that it's wrong. Right? Let alone afterwards. The hadith is only found in the 5th century. That's impossible. Like that hadith is just, it's, it's weak by definition because it's not possible that it could have not spread yet. Whereas for, for the, Han, the Hanafis, they they make and in my, my mind, in a similar, a similar or slightly different way as well. There's like if the hadith isn't widespread by this time, it's not well known among the Sahaba. It's treated in a slightly different way. We're not saying that it's wrong, but we were not going to treat it in the same level. So I'll give you an example. You know the hadith that says that, for example, the Prophet said, "Whoever doesn't do the Fatiha uh, has not prayed." Right. 
So that hadith is like down here, sahih, not a problem. But it's not on the level to change the validity of the prayer. Right? So the Hanafi is going to say, yes, you have to do the Fatiha. It's where you do the Fatiha. You must do it. But it's not that widespread yet. So it's not like the fact, not like the Quran. The Quran is widespread. Everybody knows the verses of the Quran. It's just everywhere. Everybody knows about the battle of Battle of Badr. Everybody knows about three rakats of Maghrib. Everybody knows about everything. There's basic things in the deen that are widespread. And so you're now going to come and tell me a hadith that is not widespread. And it's now going to change fundamentally the halal and haram saying, no, we're not going to do that. Right. There's there's already the, the Sharia is already there. And so, yeah, we're going to it's relevant. Like we're going to say you have to do the Fatiha. It's wajib to do the Fatiha. But it can't be far to do the Fatiha because it's not widespread. It's only widespread here. Similarly, wudu. Right. The hadith of wudu is widespread here. Uh, that you have to have an intention that the, the, the Prophet said actions are only by intentions. Right. So the majority of scholars they say the Prophet said actions are only by intentions. Wudu is an you know, action, therefore it has to have an intention. If you just fell into a bucket of water or fell into a swimming pool, that doesn't count. The Hanafi is to say, well, no, that's not true. What we see in the Quran is when you pray, you have to do A, B, and C. That's it. The stipulation that you have to specifically intend to make wudu, that comes in a hadith that is not widespread here. It's widespread here. And yeah, it's authentic, that's true. But we're not going to change the sharia based on that. So wudu is wudu, you wash those limbs, that's it. However that happens, that counts. You, you obviously don't get the reward if you didn't intend anything, but it still counts, right? And so they, they, you know, they'll, they'll do this kind of thing where they will kind of quote unquote ignore a sahih hadith or use it in a slightly different way and confuse people. Be like, what are you doing? The hadith sahih. See, well, our, our conditions are different to your conditions. The way we look at it is different. Particularly if it goes against well-known established things in the Sharia, right? When there's a system the Sharia is, has given us and then suddenly a hadith comes along and tells us something else, right? If it's not up here, they're not going to treat it in the same way. Right? It has to be what they call, you know, mashhur fi sadal awwal. To be like well known among that first generation, that kind of early generation, as opposed to all the way down here. Right? Am, am I making sense to everybody? Okay, great. Let's go back to where we got to. Um, where is my book? Okay. So that's a picture there, which hadith we were looking at was uh, was 56, was it? No. Fifty, Yeah, 56. Okay. 57, Abu Hurairah, so it says, Haddathan Ibrahim al-Mundir qal, Haddathan Muhammad ibn Ma'nin, qal, Haddathani Abi and Sa'id ibn Abi Sa'id al-Maqburi and Abu Hurairah. Um, so again, the classic chain that you will not find. Oh, he did. He he does mention it. Interesting. So this hadith, this chain of transmission, you would normally not find it in Bukhari. Maybe you can look at it later on. So this chain. Give me one second. This chain is usually not found in Bukhari. So it seems like Mima Bukhari has used it. He uses it in Sahih Bukhari because of the topic. And to remind ourselves of that principle, right, is that muhaddithin, they're not saying right and wrong. That's not what they're saying. They're saying, what is the likelihood or what is the relative utility of this hadith vis-a-vis -vis its content and vis-a-vis -vis its narrator and vis-a-vis -vis what you're using it for? Okay. So it's like saying a good car. Is this a good car? Or what, what, what do you mean good car? Like a good car to for scrap metal, a good car to look at, a good design, a good car to drive, a good car to drive the king in, right? Good car for for a military expedition. Like what what, what do you want to what, what do you want to use it for? The same kind of thing. 
you will find uh, that Imam Bukhari will use certain hadiths in his Sahih in general, and he will use certain narrators in his in his Sahih in general, and the, and then he'll use a lower level in a book like this, and also a lower level in certain chapters in his books, right? And so when you say, "What well, is Sahih?" Is it Sahih? It's like, well, it's because of the topic. Right, we'll accept we'll accept so and so in writing a hadith like this, or on this topic, or this kind of information, as opposed to other information. So I believe here Sa'id ibn Sa'id ibn Maqburi. You don't find him in Bukhari usually. Sa'id ibn Sa'id al Maqburi. I'm just looking him up very quickly. Yeah, can't find amounts. Fine, just leave it. Um, but I don't think he uses it. But this chain, it is he, generally speaking, he will not use it, but he uses it in this chapter, in his Sahih itself. Anyway, so it says from Abu Hurairah, you heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi say, "Qal sami Rasulullah sallallahu man sarahu an yubsata lahu fi rizqihi wa yunsha wa yunsa lahu fi atharihi fal yasil rahima." Abu Hurairah said that Prophet sallallahu said, who, uh, "Anyone who wants to have his provision expanded." And his uh, his his term of life lengthened should maintain ties of kinship, right? Um, okay. Uh, next chapter. Bab man wasala rahimahu ahabahu ahabahu ahluhu. Allah. Bab man wasala rahimahu ahabahu ahluhu. So the title here is different, unless there's a difference in manuscript or anything else. My title says. Uh, chapter concerning those who keep their ties will be loved by his family. Not Allah loves these people. So, Allahu Alam. The chapter seems here. It doesn't say Allah loves those who can make. It says Allah, Allah will make that his family love him. Ibn Aswa says, Ahadatha Muhammad ibn Kathir qal akhbarana Sufyan an Abi Ishaq is a sabi'i an maghra an ibn Umarah قال من اتقى ربه ووصل رحمه نسئ في أجله وثري لماله وأحبه أهله. So he says, uh, he who fears his Lord uh, with taqwa maintains good ties uh, and his term of life will be prolonged and he will have abundant wealth and his people, his family will love him. And it says this hadith is a hadith Hassan. It's not the kind of the hadith to find in Bukhari, in Sahih Bukhari itself. Hadathana Abu Next Hadith 59. Hadathana Abu Nuaim. Qal Hadathana Yunus ibn Abi Ishaq. Qal Hadathani Maghra Abu Al Mukhariq. Wahu Al Abdi. Qal Ibn Amr. Man ittaqa Rabbahu wa wasala rahimahu. Unsi alahu fi Amrihi wa thariya maluhu wa habahu ahlahu. Same hadith. Uh, same hadith there with a different chain of transmission. So just backing hadith up, right? Um, so chapter number three, Babu Bir al Akrabi fil Akrab, being dutiful to the closest relative and then the closest relative, i.e. etc. Uh, so he says, Haddathana Haywa ibn Shurayh, Qal Haddathana Baqiyya and Bahir and Khalid ibn Ma'dan and in Niqdan ibn Ma'di Karib, 
أنه سمع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن الله يوصيكم بأمهاتكم ثم يوصيكم بأمهاتكم ثم يوصيكم بآبائكم ثم يوصيكم بالأقرب فالأقرب so, uh, so it said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enjoins you to be dutiful to your mothers then he enjoins you to be dutiful to your mothers then he enjoins you to be dutiful to your fathers then he enjoins you to be dutiful to your next relative and then the next relative so that's a priority that one should have Sixty one. Um, had death and a moose of no Ismail called Had death and a Hazraj of no Uthman, Abel Hatab, a Saudi called Akhbarani Abu Ayub Suleiman, Mola Uthman ibn Afan, the freed slave of Uthman ibn Afan called Jaana Abu Hurirata Ashiata al Khamis, Layla till Juma. For Kala O Harriju ala Kuli Kati Rahimin, um, Lama Kama min Indina, for Lam Yakun Ahadun Hatta Kala Thalathan. فأتى فتى عمة له قد صرمها منذ سنتين فدخل عليها فقالت له يا ابن أخي ما جاء بك قال سمعت أبا هريرة يقول كذا وكذا قالت ارجع إليه فسله لما قال ذلك قال سمعت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إن أعمال بني آدم تعرض على الله تبارك وتعالى عشية كل خمسين ليلة خمسين Layla to Jumaa, Fala Yakbalu, Amala Kati, Rahim. So he says, Abu Ayyub uh, Suleiman, the, the freed slave of Uthman ibn Affan, said, Abu Huraira came to us on a Thursday night, the night of Jumaa. He said, Every individual who severs ties uh, of kinship is, is constricted to leave us. No one left until he had said it three times. Then a young man went to, i.e. he left, going to one of his paternal aunts, his Amma, with whom he had severed ties two years previously. He went to her and asked him, and she asked him, Nephew, why are you here? And he replied, Oh, I heard Abu Huraira say such and such. Uh, she, she said, Go back and ask him why he said that. Abu Huraira said, I heard the Prophet ﷺ, uh, say, The actions of the children of Adam are presented before Allah Almighty on Thursday evening, the night before Jum'ah. He does not accept the actions of someone who severs family ties. So subhanAllah, this is the attitude that we're supposed to have, right? Is so many of us who sit there, we listen to things. We don't need to, we don't need to listen to very many things. We need to do a lot of things, right? We need to, we need to so this is the attitude is that we sit and listen to Jum, the khutbah and Jum'ah. Like you sit there saying, I want one thing to do. You sit there listening very, very carefully. What is the risk that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give me right now? What is one thing that I can apply? And then I'm going to actually going to go and do it. As opposed to, yeah, I heard that before. Fantastic, you heard that before. But did you apply it? Right? There's so many things that we don't apply. May Allah forgive us. So this is the attitude of the Salaf, is that they heard a hadith, they applied it. They didn't just sit there and say, that's nice. Well, that's concerning. Right? Doesn't mean doesn't mean much. May Allah forgive us. Hadathana Muhammad. So this hadith, again, this hadith is arguably weak. Right? Um, it's in the Muslim of Imam Ahmad. Um... Um, borderline Sahih Hadith life. Allah. Do in laws count as kin? Yeah, they do. Um, okay, 61. We've just read that one. 62. Haddathana Muhammad ibn Imran ibn Abi Layla. قال حدثنا أيوب بن جابر الحنفي عن آدم بن علي عن ابن عمر قال ما أنفق رجل على نفسه وأهله يحتسبها إلا آجره الله تعالى فيها وابدأ بمن تعول فإن كان فضلا فالأقرب الأقرب وإن كان فضلا فناول right, nothing and no man spends on his family and his uh, himself on his family anticipating a reward from Allah will fail to be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So notice the, the, the caveat there is in niyyah. Why did you sit, why did you pay for the, the to renew your car license? Oh, because I have to. Error. Wasted your life. Why did you pay for the car license? So that I can drive. So that I can I can make money. So that I can provide the nafaq of my, for, my, for my wife and children. So that I can meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be a man at dar, and be somebody who fulfilled their trust. What a difference. 
right? What a difference. We live life, there's this distraction, that there's no such thing as distractions. There are no such thing as distractions in life. Our mentality is a distraction in life, right? So I'm like, I, I really wish I could just do it in better. What are you talking about? You're always doing it better. It's just you're not there, right? You, you're the one who's just not there. Right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's a time, there's a, there's a time for everything. It's just the issue is we are not connected. So when you're working the commute to work, an hour and a half commute to work, plus all the things that are revolved around it and this, checking the oil of the car, uh, whatever it is, these kind of meanless, uh, pointless things are all meaningful, right? And then so, but then, and then prioritize yourself. So it says, then begin with the, with those who support is, uh, so begin with, ibdat biman ta'ul, he should begin with those whose support is his responsibility. If there is something left over, he should spend on the next relatives, right? So one should not be spending on uh, cousins and nephews and other people when you're not giving your own family their haq, right? That's wrong. You should ask them, do you mind? Right? Do you mind? Right? And so we should be very careful. And, you know, and, and we shouldn't we should be frank about it, right? It's like, you know, I want to do this with this money. And... Um, you know, I know I owe so many money, or we need this, or we need that. Can I? Can you? Over, can you overlook that right that you have for something else, etc.? If there is something else, then you can give it away. Right. So don't giving away or spending money on something else is not right. You need to have priorities in place. So so many of us like we do things like oh that's nice, that's not priority, right? May Allah forgive us all. Somebody has a credit card, for example. Someone has a credit card should not be giving any sadaqah ever, ever. Should just be every single penny they have should be trying to get out of, uh, you know, get paying their credit card thing off so they're not in doing interest anymore, right? So this is totally like lack of priorities. Like, why on earth are you giving charity when you're like dealing with 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 hellfire? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Um, so we should be very very careful, and uh, understand that it's not your priorities; it's Allah's priorities. Right? It's not me. It's what I think, what it gratifies me. It's nice to help poor people. It's nice to do this. Nice. No, you shouldn't do that. You should do priorities what Allah wants. Right? Um, that's where the priorities are. Okay. Um, next chapter. Um, okay. In the previous hadith is borderline. It looks like Hassan the Ghairihi, meaning the hadith is borderline, is it sahih, is it da'if, 50-50, but it does agree with the content of another hadith that is that is correct. So Allah alam, seems like a Hassan hadith. Okay, chapter 31. rahma ala fihim rahim. Ubaidullah ibn Musa qal akhbarna Sulaymanu Abu Idamin قال سمعت عبد الله بن أبي أوفى يقول عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن الرحمة لا تنزل على قوم فيهم قاطع رحم So he says the mercy does not descend on a people when there is someone among them who severs ties of kinship الله أعلم as we know the principle in the deen is لا تزل وزر وزر أخرى Right, no one, no one will get carry the, carry the sin of somebody else. So why is it that I'm stuck? I'm, you know, why am I being punished because of somebody else? It's because you agree with them. That's why. Right? You're like, yeah, yeah. You you tell them. You tell them. As opposed to brother, I don't mean to interfere, but you know, you should when it's when you can go and tell them sorry. You know, just just make up with them. Right. So if you're supporting them in the haram, you're part of that haram, as opposed to somebody who is against it. Right. Otherwise, otherwise Allah Subhanahu does not punish people. For, uh, for the sins of other people, right? And my editor here says this hadith is found in the Shu'ab al-Iman by Imam al Bayhaqi. So it's a hadith, a hadith collection to do with imani kind of things. So most likely weak. And the in the chain of transmission is the teacher, Imam Bukhari's teacher in this thing is Sulaiman um, Abu Idam, and uh, Ibn Adi in the Kamil in week week for week narrators. He said. Lem aralahu hadith al munkaran. I have never seen any of his hadiths, the content of which are off. But he doesn't have many hadiths. Okay, so this is very important. How do you become a reliable hadith narrator? You become a reliable hadith narrator by narrating hadiths that other people narrate. 
So I sent this print to my printer and it printed it off as I printed it. Therefore, my printer is reliable. And it did it again and again and again. And so now I know that when I send this print to that printer, it's going to go through. I send a text message through Sprint to somebody and it comes out as I sent it. Therefore, Sprint is reliable. Right? That's how it works. And now when this narrator narrates something and no one else corroborates it, I trust him because he has so many other hadiths that are corroborated. Right? So you, you quote unquote, start off your career as a hadith narrator you know, so to speak, meaning you just show statistic evidence that most of your hadiths agree with other people. And then people are, are familiar with you narrating hadiths in the same way that other people narrate hadiths. So therefore, you must be accurate. And then when you narrate a hadith that no one else corroborates, we trust you. That's the basic picture, right? And so he said, so the, so here, he, the, Ibn Adi in the, in the Kamil, he said, I've never seen any of his hadiths that are weird, meaning I've never seen him narrate a hadith from scholars and other people narrate that self same hadith in a different way i haven't seen that but that said he doesn't have many hadiths so therefore maybe he has 20 hadiths 30 hadiths right and then like all of them are the same that other people so i don't know is that statistically significant to show that he's accurate or not i don't know right so that's that that's the picture of this person so you have to understand that there's no such thing as like a magical badge that goes on you as a hadith narrator we're dealing with people traveling Quoting hadiths from other people. That's that's hadith. So how would you trust him? I trust you because you don't make mistakes. Okay, how would you know I make a mistake? Was you narrate the same hadith that someone else narrates in a different way. And you keep doing it again and again and again. And now I don't trust you anymore. Or the opposite. You narrate the same hadiths that other people narrate. And you keep doing it again and again and again. And now I trust you. That is the basic simple way that hadith narrator, hadith scholarship works. Okay, um, so again, the caveat there, as we mentioned, assuming that, you know, Allah SWT doesn't punish you for the sins of other people. Okay, um, that's the next next chapter now. Uh, the wrong action, the sin of somebody who, who breaks family ties. Haddathani Abdullah bin Salih, qal haddathani al-layth, qal haddathani uqayl, an ibn shihab in akhbarani Muhammad ibn Jubayr ibn Mut'im, أن جبير المطعم أخبره أنه سمع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول لا يدخل الجنة قاتل رحم. Right, so this is the same chain as that hadith we were demonstrating before, super sahih chain. It says someone who to serve us ties of kinship will net into paradise, i.e., immediately. Right, as we know, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa taala forgives anything other than shirk. So somebody who dies unrepentant, I I do not talk to my brother ever. I hate him. Hope he goes to hell or whatever you have bad feelings towards us to him may Allah protect us all okay and he's unrepentant i know this haram but i don't care like i'm i'm not going to change and then allah spontana doesn't forgive him he'll go to hell may Allah protect us and then allah spontana will choose when he comes out but it's not kufr is it right so we have to understand this hadith in a context of the general context of the quran and other hadith all right but it's a very scary hadith uh, 65. So, Haddathana Hajjaj ibn Minhal, Qal Haddathana Shu'batu, Qal Akhbarani Muhammad ibn Abdul Jabbar, Qal Simatu Muhammad ibn Ka'b, Al Quradi, Qal Haddathana Annahu Samia, Abu Hurayrti Yuhadithu, and Rasullah, he salas the Qal in the Rahima, Shujna, Min al Rahman, to call Ya Rabbi, in the Volimtu, Ya Rabbi, in the Kotertu, Ya Rabbi, in the Inni, Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi. Uh, it's the same hadith with different chain of transmission we saw before. But it says the ties of kinship are derived from the Rahman. They say, they, they say, My Lord, I have been wronged, my Lord, I have been cut off, my Lord, I have, I have, I have. Right? So you can see the the, the, the metaphor here is this connection, like I'm, it's almost from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's almost, it's almost like it's Allah, right? It's almost like the ties of trans that you're you're tied to your mother and you're tied to your to to other people is almost like Allah Himself. Now this is the fine line between Islam and Hinduism. Is the Kaaba Allah? No. Is your mother Allah? No. Are your family family ties Allah? No. For the Hindus, what happens is the signs of Allah. And these sacred things of Allah, like the cow and like these, the signs of Allah become Allah. 
right? So, so that's why they are monotheists and polytheists at the same time. They're, they're polytheists because they believe in these different gods. They're monotheists and because in reality they see that it's one god, right? Original Hinduism is monotheistic. But the error that they've made is the signs of Allah and the means through which you worship Allah, through being good to your parents, through um, uh, observing the rituals of, of things, they almost become Allah, such that the cow, for example, is holy. It's not just a sign of Allah. It is Allah, right? And that's a very fine line. Like it's a very fine line. So somebody who has very weak Iman, they can't see that. But someone who has very strong Iman, they're like dead scared, like, my relationship with my mother is my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My relationship with, like, my disregard for other people's rights is my disregard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's one thing. But if you have weird aqidah, it can cross over into shirk, right? Same thing with, uh, with Christians. Like, what's the difference between Jesus and Allah? Like, if you don't accept Jesus, you don't accept Allah. If you don't believe the miracles of Jesus, you don't believe in the power of Allah. It's one and the same thing, right? But there's a fine line between the two, right? Right? Allah says in the Quran, and you didn't throw, O Muhammad, when you threw, but Allah threw. So what, are you Allah? I'm not saying that. But your connection with the Prophet is your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that doesn't mean the Prophet is Allah. There's a fine aqidah difference. And so that's where the role of aqidah is so important. Christians, they do not have aqidah. They don't have a clear aqidah. They're confused. Hindus do not have clear aqidah. They're confused. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved this, this religion by having clear aqidah. And, and scholars who define, what exactly do we mean by this? What do we mean by that? Otherwise, it's very confusing. Because the stronger your iman becomes, the, the thinner the gap becomes. The thinner the gap becomes. Right? And so it's very, but it's very important that gap is there, fundamental gap between us and Christians and us and Hindus. Right. Um, um, so that's that hadith there, just different version. So it's, this hadith is the same hadith, but it's a different version. So it's very, very common. You know, hadiths are not narrated verbatim. It's an approximate meaning. Sometimes it's changing the order, replace this word, summarize. It's the same hadith. Right, it's the same hadith. Right, as long as it's the same narrator with the same general meaning, it's the same hadith. Innam al a'malu bin niyat. Innam al a'malu bin Same thing. Act the action is only judged by the intention. Actions are only judged by intentions. It's the same. There's no difference. Like, did the Prophet say niyat or did he say niyat? It doesn't matter. It's the same hadith. Right. Um, and so hadith in general are narrated are not narrated, but verbatim. Okay, 66. Uh, where do we get to? 66. Haddathana Adam ibn Abi Iyas. Qal haddathana ibn Abi Dhib. This is one of, another of the Madini scholars, right? Same time as Imam, Imam, Abu, Imam Malik in, in Medina. Ibn Abi Dhib. Qal haddathana Sa'id ibn Sam'an. Qal sami'tu Aba Hurayrata yata'awwadhu min imarat al-subyan wa sufaha. Wa qal Sa'id ibn Sam'an fa'akhbaran ibn Hasana. الجهني أنه قال لي أبي لي أبي هريرة وما آية ذلك قال أن تقطع الأرحام ويطاع المغوي ويعص المرشد. so so uh, سعيد بن سمعان he heard Abu Hurairah saying Allah protect me from the power of children from the leadership of children and of fools. Oh Allah protect me from the day that our the people who will lead us will be fool will be fools and will be children. right and سعيد uh, سعيد said uh, Ibn Hassan al Johani told me that he asked Abu Huraira, says, What's the sign of that? Like, like when is that going to happen? That we're going to have children ruling the show? He replied, uh, that, that he, no, it doesn't say that. It says that ties of kinship shall be severed, and that those who are in error will be obeyed, and that those who are correct will be disobeyed. Right? That's a sign of the end of time that family ties will be cut, and that people who send people astray will be obeyed and that people who guide you to the right will be disobeyed right and this hadith is uh sahih according to some people Allah um Allah so simple thing 
look how Islam has been for the last 1,400 years and stick to that. And you'll find out who's guiding you right or wrong. Um, simple thing. Someone gives you a fatwa and say, give me, tell me, tell me, tell, give me a thousand people that have given this fatwa. Very simple answer. Okay, 33. Uh, that this person will be punished in this world. حدثنا آدم قال حدثنا شعبة قال حدثنا عيينة بن عبد الرحمن قال سمعت أبي يحدث عن أبي بكرة قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما من ذنب أحرى أن يعجل الله لصاحب العقوبة في الدنيا ما يدخر له في مع ما يدخر له في الآخرة من قتيل الرحم والباغي. He says uh, there is no action which Allah is swifter to punish in this world or more likely to punish in this world in addition to the punishment that's stored for the next light world than cutting off family ties and injustice. Right? So when you wrong somebody, you're only wronging yourself. When you don't forgive someone, you're only withholding forgiveness from yourself. When you are cheap, you're only being in cheap to yourself. Uh, when you're cruel, you're only hurting yourself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it impossible for us to ever harm anybody else. We can only harm ourselves. That's all we can do. We, are, we have a gun, it's only pointed one direction, which is ourselves. Which is, you can only harm yourself, you can't harm anybody else. So don't look at anybody else, oh, this person's harming me. Look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And But next time you harm somebody, know that you're just pulling the trigger in your own, yourself. Right? May Allah protect us all. Um, باب ليس الواصل بالمكافئ. So Abdullah ibn Amr, so this says, حدثنا محمد بن كثير قال أخبرنا سفيان عن الأعمش والحسن بن so الأعمش here again picture trying uh, an idea of of kind of like how the system works. Muhammad ibn Kathir, this is Imam Bukhari's teacher from Sufyan al-Thawri, right? From al-Amsh, who is al-Amsh, the student of Imam Abu Hanifa, right? Well, Hassan ibn Amr wa Fitr and Mujahid. This is now Mujahid, the student of Ibn Umar and the student of Ibn Abbas. And Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As. Right? Um, to the Tabi'in. Qala Sufyan wa lam yarfa'ahu al-a'mash ila Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Aha. So now, this chain, it goes through, at some point it goes through three people. One of them narrates it, al-a'mash, narrates it as the words of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As. The other two narrate it. Uh, they they narrate it as the words of the Prophet So here's a problem. Are these the words of the Prophet or are these the words of? Did they say Qala Rasulullah? Did they not say Qala Rasulullah? It's important. Again, there's a difference between Islam and Christianity. Christianity, we don't really know where where who what's Jesus saying, what's not who who wrote the Bible. We don't know. Whereas here, the very careful things that these early people did. Is it the words of Jesus? Is it the words of the Prophet, or is it not? Ultimately, it's obviously from the Prophet How could it not be? Right, but the point is, uh, they're very, very careful. So he says, "Lays al wasilu bil mukafir." Says the one who maintains ties is not the one who merely reciprocates. Lakin al wasilu was, lakin al wasil al ladi ida qati at rahimahu wa salaha, or the one who maintains family ties is the one who who when he when he is cut off, he keeps the ties. That's what we're talking about, right? So the good husband or the good wife is not the person who's like, well, yeah, I'm a good husband, good wife. My wife's nice to me and I'm nice to her. But if she's not nice to me, I'm not nice to her. That doesn't mean anything. That's easy. It's easy to be nice to people who are nice to you. It's not easy to be nice to people who are not nice to you. That's when it counts. Being good to your parents, it only, it only means anything when they're not nice to you. Of course, you're going to be nice to your mother if she helps you. But when your mother tells you something you really don't want to hear, or your mother is, was, is just wrong, like she's when she abuses you somehow, or she says something that's just totally irrelevant. Like you drives you insane. How could my mom possibly say that? That's when it counts to be respectful. That's when it counts. Otherwise, what does it mean? Right? What does what does akhlaq mean if you if the people around you are nice to you? What does akhlaq mean when the people around you are not nice to you? That's the only time when it means anything. That you show akhlaq to people who are rude to you. Everybody is nice to people who are nice to them. Are you nice to people who are rude to you? That's that's the importance. Right? And so again, here it's like, oh my God, why is this person doing this thing? Don't look at the per person. Look at Allah. Allah has put you in a simulation, has made, given you relatives who are rude to you, who are inconsiderate, who are liars, who are cheats, who are backstabbers, just for you to get this this thing. And you're like, oh, why are they like this? Like, they don't exist. 
They're just creation of Allah to test you. Just like the, you know, the three people with the angels in Bani Israel, right? The angel comes to one in the form of this, and the angel comes to the other form of that, and says, you know, these just testing. Just it's just a test, right? It's just a test. It's not a real thing, right? So the problem is when we lose sight on what is real. We don't see Allah. We just see people and this and that. And I can't believe he said that. And she said that. And they're such a liar. And how can I possibly do like that? You, you've been surrounded with, with, with you've been surrounded by, by, by oppression for you to show akhlaq. For you, it's, it's, a, it's a computer game. Just like in, you know, shoot 'em up games or Mario or whatever game it is. There has to be a bad guy for you to know to show your akhlaq. So may Allah just keep the focus. And we have to always keep that focus. So, um, um, so he says, Hadith Sahih, Akhrajahu Ahmad, Abdul Hambafi, or Bay Hatti Fisher, Abbey Man, right? So the Hadith, I believe, is in other places as well. I think it's in. Oh, no, it's in Sahih Bukhari as well. Sorry. It's in Sahih Bukhari. Okay, next chapter is. Excuse me. It's here, and I have to stop here, inshallah ta'ala. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad. وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سبحان الله وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك. My apologies for tangents today. Shall we see you all next week?